one. Today we are going to be talking about Replicate 3D. Let's get to it. As always, we put in a Fusion Comp. That's under Effects, Effects, Fusion Comp. Scroll up, get Fusion Comp. Let's go to the Fusion page. Put this here. Shift and space bar and type replicate. Pull that in. Replicate 3D has basically two inputs. This orange one and this green one. This orange input takes in a 3D mesh. This could be a particle emitter node. That is a 3D particle emitter node. It could be a 3D object. And this here converts all the vertices that this object that is coming in here comes in, converts it into tiny pieces of the object, the 3D object you connect to this. Let's bring in an image plane. Connect this to the orange input of Replicate 3D. If we drag Replicate 3D to the left viewer, nothing shows because there's no input yet for this. So let's bring in a shape 3D node. Let's make it a sphere. And let's connect this shape 3D to this input. And we have this whole thing here. The reason why it's like this is because it, this shape is too big. This sphere is too big. So I'm going to drop this down drastically. So you see we have a plane of spheres. Now, let me drag this image plane to the right viewer. What Replicate 3D does, like I said earlier, is it inputs a copy of this shape for each of the vertex on the 3D object. So how do we know where the vertices are? Um, so let's go to image plane. If we go to normals and tangent, if you tick normals, and let's say you turn the view by holding down Alt on the keyboard or Option on the keyboard and holding down the middle mouse button and dragging to the right. You see these tiny things sticking out. They are sticking out from the vertices on this plane. So for each of the vertex, you have a, a sphere. The second vertex, like that, on and on till all vertices are covered. Okay, so that's what Replicate 3D basically does. Same thing if you have a particle emitter. Let's say I bring in a particle emitter node and the particle renderer. Let's connect this. If you go to particle renderer, you make sure this is 3D. We can bring in a Replicate 3D. Bring that in here. Connect this as the input that we want. Then we can bring in a shape 3D. Let's say for this one, I just want to change it to cubes and I connect this to replicate 3D. If I drag this replicate 3D to the viewer, it's like this because we need to drop the size of the shape. Uh, drop it a whole lot. Let's zoom in by holding down control and scrolling the mask wheel. So we see the original particle render is this. They're just tiny dots, right? But each of them has been replaced with the cube. So let's delete this. Okay. Let's bring Replicate 3D to the right viewer. So you see this view. It's really nice. And how we set it up is pretty fast. So you can do complex things with Replicate 3D. Well, let me just explain how it works. Let's go to Replicate 3D and the settings for Replicate 3D. This step is for each of the vertices, a sphere would a copy of the sphere here of the sphere will be used, right? Let me put this here. So you see that's a sphere that we are 
copying across all the vertices. Now, if we say step one, it means for each of the vertices, we are going to have a sphere. But if I increase it to two, so it means for each of two vertices, we are going to have one sphere. So it's going to keep doing that across board. That's what this does. Let me zoom out a little, make it a 200. So see, that's how it's going to go. If we keep dragging this on, it's going to keep dropping like that. So we have fewer spheres representing the vertices of the image plane. The next thing is loop, the input mode. Now the beauty of Replicate 3D is it can take more than one 3D object. Let me bring in another shape 3D. Let's make this a cube and connect this to Replicate 3D. Of course, you'll see we need to reduce the size of this. So we'll just drop it a whole lot. Something like that. Let me make it a bit bigger. Okay. So we have this. So what Replicate 3D does when it's in loop mode is it does, it picks this and for the first vertice, then picks this for the next vertice, then picks this for the, so it loops between this and this. So you see that happening here, a sphere, a cube, sphere, cube, sphere, cube, on and on. It just keeps doing that across board, right? That's, so that's what looping does. If I tick random, random just does it randomly. It's just, you can connect way more nodes here. I'm not sure if there's an upper limit to the number of nodes you could connect to Replicate 3D. Then time offset. Let's go to this cube. Go to unlock the width and height. Let's just copy, click copy, double click paste, double click paste. Okay, so we have this. So I want to increase this width a little so we see what I'm about to do. So I want this just to rotate about the Y axis. So I go to transform load. Let's go to first frame. Let's keyframe it. Go to the 10th frame. Let's make this 20. Then we go to spline editor. Tick Y rotation. Tick zoom to fit. Click on this button to select all the keyframes. Then click on set relative to make sure that this rotation just keeps continuing on and on. Then close the spline editor. If we play this now, you'll see the boxes are rot rotating all at once. Now let's go to replicate 3D and increase offsets. Let me make it one frame so it's a bit more obvious. So one frame apart, the rotation is one frame apart, one frame apart for each of them. So it keeps increasing the rotation time offset down the arrangement for this particular one that I'm rotating, which is the cube 3D, right? So that's how this works for time offset. Okay, so let's go back to replicate 3D. Let's stop the animation. That's that for time offsets, double click to reset. Now aligned, to show you how aligned works. In fact, let's remove the animation we just did by double clicking on Y. Okay, so we have this goal. I want to make it a sphere so I can bring a shape 3D node. Make this a sphere and um, connect that there. Okay. So now if I zoom out a little bit, Maybe a little bit more. So you see we have this. Let's make it a hundred. So you see. So the way this works, it just places the objects we have in around the sphere. They, they, they're not they're not wrapping the sphere in the way they are aligned. Suppose if I now pick replicate 3D and I pick aligned. What it does, if I zoom in a little bit more, let's make it 200. What it does is, you see, it tilts the cube to wrap itself around the surface of the sphere. Let me go back to not aligned. You see, just these, they are all rounded, but they are all 
in the axis on which see this the weights on this axis it just stays on there but if i say aligned it aligns around the sphere the technical explanation is it 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 takes into account the normal for this shape and tilts its angle around that normal I hope that makes sense to you guys, but I hope you get what I'm trying to say here, right? So that's what that is. TBN aligned according to Dimension Resolve, uh, Black Magic, it's, it, it's this is more stable compared to just aligned. So you can use either to achieve this wrapped around um, look. Okay, that's that for alignment. Then this color, combined particle color thing, this. I believe only works for particle emitter nodes because I've not been able to get it to work with actual shapes. It only takes on the color. This color I set here, if I go and set this color to um, that, that's how that works. It doesn't, if I go to the shape, set that color to something. So we have this, but if I now set this, I set the color of this to something I green doesn't come through here at all so yeah so whatever color you want this particles to be you set it in this shape then translation here comes the crazy part of things let's make this a single viewer let's zoom out a little here comes the crazy part of things let me zoom out a little bit more so you guys see how craziness <laughs> happened here so let's go to translation let's say I increase x See what will happen. I'm using X. See, do you see that? Do you see that, guys? Do you do you guys see what I'm what I'm dealing with here? All right. So that's what translation does. The Y. I'm I'm sure you guys are seeing this, right? Okay. So you can animate all this, and the Z just scatters. <laughs> Okay, guys, so that's how that works. Let's go to rotation. And this rotation is rotation of the objects. Let me show you what I mean. So you see each of the objects. Let's say I see this cube. I see it rotating along the x axis, rotating along the y axis, the z axis. So that's what rotation does for the particles. And of course, you can set the pivot. Where you want to rotate around. If I wanted to do something interesting, I could move this pivot out the bit and now rotate. No, not so. If I move this like that and I rotate to walk. I'm just a mouse. So you see what I just did? Because I moved the pivot on the y axis, right? And if I now decide to rotate x, you can create some interesting movements. Okay. Just play with this and see how it works. It's beautiful stuff. So we can increase the scale of the particles at all. Now comes the jitter tab. You know, all these things we have been doing, this movement and all, they've been all been uniform across all the particles, but jitter makes it random. So if I decide to increase the X, you'll see that everything now starts becoming kind of scattered. Though if I go to the original shape, I can always rotate all of this. So it looks like an organized mess. Let's go back to replicate 3D. Same thing with Y, it just increases the randomness. Then you can go and click receipt to change how the randomness looks. Right, so you can connect this all the same objects to different replicate 3Ds and just change the same replicate 3D. Let's say I copy this and paste it here. Same shapes. Connect this here. Connect that there. Connect this here. And I make this dual viewer. I try this here. Let's make this sustain so they look alike. If I go to this, just go to Jita and recede it, and we have a different look. So basically, that's what the Jita tab is for. You can use it to increase randomness across translation, rotation, and pivot. 
That's how this works. So that's in a nutshell, without going too far, is the Replicate 3D. Let's just do a little thing. Let's clean up what we've done here. Let's just, um, let me do this. Okay, one other thing I need to mention that I haven't mentioned is this. Let me delete this Replicate 3D. Let me delete, um, let me just disconnect this. Let's disconnect that. So this Replicate 3D shows nothing because there's no input yet. Let's assume I drag this replic this particular shape now, this, this shape. Let me put the shape here. Let's zoom in a bit so we see the shape. This is a cube. Let's say I connect this cube here to the Replicate 3D. See the color I connect, right? You must always connect your shape to the first input. What they call input one, you must connect it in sequence. So this, if I evaluate, you see it's 3D1 input one. Replicate 3D will show nothing. It will show nothing because input one is not connected. But here I am connecting to input three. Until I connect an input two, input one, and input two, input three won't show. Okay? So if I disconnect this and I reconnect this to this input one, then it shows, right? Let's go to Jita. Let's just um, reset everything here. A double clicking. So we have this. So what I want to do, let's say we change this ship to a Taurus. Let's reduce the radius by a whole lot. Oops. Section by a whole lot. Is this if you want to fine tune your reduction, just you can use this place and just drag your mouse. It's still too big, like that. Okay, so if we zoom in a bit, see what we've done, see this torus is round this image. Let's go to replicate 3D, go to controls, it's aligned, right? So what I want to do is, let's go through this shape 3D. If I want to increase the number of torus around it, I go to controls. Yes, I increase base subdivisions, then increase height subdivisions. Now I'm going to go to replicate 3D. This is just an example, guys. I'm going to increase the step count to, let's just say, 11. If I zoom out 50%, see this thing here? Huh? We will get there. So we now go to this original shape. Let's delete this other one. This shape that is just a sphere. That's the sphere. I now want this to rotate about the y axis. So I'm on the first frame. I go to transform. I go to this, just double click on this to set it to zero. Keyframe it. Go to frame 10. Go here and set the angle to 20. Enter. Then we go to spline editor. We just wanted to keep rotating for the length of the comp. So I click on Y rotation. Zoom to fit. Then I click on this button to select all the keyframes. And I click on set validity to make sure that the rotation just keeps continuing. Infinity. I close Plan Editor, and then let's see what we've done here. So let's play this. See how we sent up something so deceptively simple. It is crazy. See how beautiful this looks, guys. And we did it in just a few clicks. Wanna you wanna know fusion? Just sit on it and work with it. It's crazy what's possible, right? All right, so that's it, guys. That's it for Replicate 3D. Hope you learned one or two things on this one. Um, see you on the next one. Cheers.